Hi, I'm David Liu from Melbourne, Australia, reporting from Room Now uh, from ACI 21. Uh, once again, another big packed day three. Um, a lot of bigger abstracts, a lot of controversial abstracts out there um, today. I actually wanted to tell you a little bit about um, cannabidiol. Uh, and I know that everyone, um, the moment this comes up, it's kind of evokes memories in clinic of, of probably situations like mine where this que questions about CBD get asked all the time uh, by our patients. Um, and there's always a conversation that goes along the lines of, well, uh, you know, absence of evidence, uh, you know, cautious, da 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 And I think we've heard um, at different points at, at, at ACR about what potential there might be and where the limitations might be and how we might go about managing this. And of course, it's an area where the um, therapeutics as such have, have gone ahead of the evidence. So finally, some evidence. What does it say? Is this going to be the last CBD trial? Well, um, really a nice double-blinded randomized control trial um, from uh, investigator initiated, importantly, um, from Jonathan Villa and colleagues in Aalborg in, uh, in Denmark. And it's looking um, at, uh, at hand osteoarthritis and, psoriatic, and inactive psoriatic arthritis and looking at reducing pain in those patients. Because um, the, the questions um, about what happens with inflammatory pain are a little bit uncertain, uncertain in animal models. There's better evidence for how it might affect neuropathic pain. Um, and, but a lot of the trials um, that have been done before, looking very vaguely, haven't actually had uh, cannabinoid products with cannabidiol with CBD in it. So what happens when you take synthetic CBD and you uh, uh, randomize patients to receive that with hand osteoarthritis? And the other accusation that gets given is that people get one dose and then nothing. People don't get a really good run at it. So decent going dose of synthetic CBD for 12 weeks continuously daily. What happens when you do that? What happens with pain? Well, I'll tell you what happens absolutely nothing. So in the 136 patients uh, that happened there, so uh, if you compare the two arms, uh, and in fact, I have the numbers here, uh, how many achieved uh, greater than 30% pain reduction? Uh, 27 in the cannabinoid, uh, sorry, 40% in the cannabidiol arm, 40% in the placebo arm. Greater than 50% reduction, 25% in the cannabidiol arm, 27% in the placebo arm. Absolutely nothing to separate them. You look at everything, you look at the pain, you look at the pain VADs, you look at all the hack DI, and you look at um, the HADS depression, HADS anxiety, all of these things, um, it's really uh, much of nothing there. Um, is this gonna be the last CBD trial? No. Is this gonna be the last um, negative CBD trial? No. Now you can make arguments as to, well, there should have been a higher dose, um, there weren't flavonoids in this synthetic product, and that makes all the difference. Maybe we haven't picked the right population. And, you know, what have we got that works in hand OA and, inact and for pain in active PSA anyway? All valid questions. But in reality, uh, we've seen another negative trial. And if this is, if there's any other drug, would we keep on pursuing it um, like we pursue um, CBD for indications like this? Uh, or that people do at least. Uh, so in my mind, another interesting um, study that someone's, we've been waiting for someone to do, and surely at this point, this is an important piece in the puzzle in that discussion that you have with your patients about CBD. So for plenty more uh, about all the weird, wonderful and important from ACI 21, head on down to roomnow.com.